Lake Hill United Methodist Church Blue Christmas Worship Service. We pray that you feel God speaking to you through this time and that in it all, you are able to experience the joy of the birth of Christ. Part of this service will involve um, partaking of communion and lighting of candles. So you might want to take a moment to gather a candle, um, anything that you could use for communion elements. So in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by God, and without God, nothing came to be. But what came to be through God was life. And this life was the light of the world. And the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. We gather today in the name of Christ, our light, who brings a flame of hope to all of us. Christ, the one who gives rest to the weary, healing to the hurting, comfort to the sorrowful, and peace to all. Let us pray. God of mercy, hear our prayer in this Advent season. You have searched us and you know us. And so you know how difficult it can be to always be wholehearted in our celebration of your good news. There are times that part of us do not want to listen to the angels' songs. There are times we believe their tidings of great joy are for some people but not for us. God, we hold tight to you. We ask for strength for today, courage for tomorrow, and peace for our lives. We ask these things in the name of Christ, who shares in our lives both, both in joy and sorrow. Amen. Amen.
words from Psalm 21. Maybe they are speaking of your heart tonight. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from helping me? So far from the words of my groaning? Oh my God, I cry by day, but you do not answer. And by night, but I find no rest. In you, our ancestors trusted. They trusted, and you delivered them. It was you who brought me from the womb, you who kept me safe on my mother's breast. Since my mother bore me, you have been my God. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. God does not despise the affliction of the afflicted. God does not hide from me. When I cry to God, God hears me. Thanks be to God. This empty chair represents a Christmas without the usual traditions of the past. It can represent those who won't be home for Christmas. Perhaps a relationship has ended. Perhaps the people we love will be far away. Perhaps sickness or death has changed how things used to be. Maybe because of a multitude of other reasons, you can't be with loved ones like you would normally do at Christmas. All of these forms of loss mean nothing feels the same. Whomever or whatever you are missing this holiday season, the empty chair is very real. It's okay to feel sorrow, loss, emptiness, and even anger because you have an empty chair at home. May you cling tenaciously to the hope through Christ that we celebrate even now. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, then mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God Light this first candle to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember clearly their faces, their voices, their bodies. We embrace and give thanks for the memories that bind them to us in this season of expectation, when all creation waits for the light. We remember them with love. May God's eternal love surround them. Lord, Hear our prayer. O oh, come thou day spring coming cheer Our spirits by thine advent here Disperse the gloomy clouds of oh, night In death's dark shadows put to fly
light this second candle to remember the pain of loss. Loss of trust, loss of jobs, loss of health, loss of faith, and the loss of joy. And we acknowledge and embrace the pain of the past, O oh God, and now we offer it to you. We ask that into our wounded hearts and our open hands, you will place the gift of peace, shalom. Because we remember that through you all things are possible. Refresh, restore, renew us, O oh God, and lead us into your future. Lord, hear our prayer. O oh, come the wisdom from on high Who order things that things might only To us the path of knowledge show And cost us in a way We light this third candle to remember ourselves this Christmas time. We pause and remember the past weeks, months, and for some of us years that have been heavy with our burdens. We accept and lay before you, God, the sharpness of memory, the sadness and grief, the hurt and fear, the anger and pain. We accept and lay before you the ways we feel we have fallen short and the times we have spent blaming ourselves and you for all that we have suffered. We accept and lay before you the time we have walked alone in darkness and in knowledge of our own mortality. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, the mourns in lonely exile here, until the sun of represents our courage, the courage to face our sadness, to share our feelings with others, our doubts, our fears, our anger, our frustration, and our depression, and to dare to hope even in the depths of our pain. And we remember that though we have journeyed far and that while lost, we may have turned away from the light, but the light itself has not failed. God longs to take you by the hand and says to you, do not fear, I will help you. About some areas where you need help in finding courage. Lord, hear our prayer. Oh, come the day spring, come and cheer Our spirits by thine advent here Disperse the gloomy clouds of night And death's dark shadows put to fly Rejoice, rejoice
Standing here in the center of the candles represents some of life's joy and pain. The central candle represents Jesus, who has come to be Emmanuel, God with us in the midst of it all. Jesus, who was born as a helpless baby and who hears our cries and understands how weak and helpless we can feel. Jesus, also known as the Good Shepherd, who knows our hearts and offers us healing and hope in the midst of our suffering. Jesus, who came to help us understand just how much God loves us and who came to lived and died to restore our relationship with God. Jesus, who will reign as king over God's new creation, where there will be no more sickness or death or crying or pain for all eternity, and who has given us his Holy Spirit to help, comfort, and sustain. And in lighting this candle, we remember that loving God promises us comfort and peace today and all of our tomorrows. Oh, come desire of nations by All people sin one heart and mind Bid envy, strife and quarrel words from the book of Isaiah chapter 40 and listen for how God is speaking to you through these words. Comfort, oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. To whom then will you compare me, or who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out the host and numbers them, calling them all by name, because he is great in strength, mighty in power, not one is missing. What do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel? My way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God. Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint and strengthens the powerless. Even youths will faint and be weary, and the young will fall exhausted. But those who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint.
hear these words from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep you going out and you coming in from this time on and forevermore. So the story of the first Christmas is not really a happy story, but it is a story about life in the real world. We had Mary of Nazareth who is engaged to the carpenter Joseph and she discovers that she is pregnant. Now Joseph does not want to embarrass Mary and so he plans to break the engagement privately because you see this was not an easy time for the couple. Their country was under Roman occupation and King Herod who had ruled Palestine for the Romans was known for his cruelty. So these were not exactly ideal conditions for bringing a child into the world. But in the midst of their turmoil, an angel, God's messenger, speaks to Joseph in a dream and tells Joseph to proceed with his marriage to Mary. Hear these words from Matthew. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, But before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. And all this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. And when Jesus awoke, or when Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him, and he took Mary as his wife. These are the words of God for all people. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God.
now in the spirit of the season. Let us ask our God for what we need for ourselves as we participate in this Christmas season, as people coping with all that life brings. God, we come to you as Christmas dawns with pain growing inside us. And as the nights have been growing longer, so has the darkness that has wrapped itself around our hearts. And so in the season of our longest nights, we offer to you the pain in our hearts, the traumas that some of us cannot put into words. Loving God, hear our prayers. Compassionate God. There are those among us who are grieving over what might have been. A death or loss has changed our experience of Christmas. Once, it was a special day for us too. But someone has died or moved away. Or we have lost a job or a cause. We find ourselves adrift, alone, lost. Lord, help us find our way. Loving God, hear our prayer. The Christmas season reminds us of all that used to be and cannot be anymore. And the memories of what was the fears of what may be stifle us. Because all around us we hear the sounds of celebration, but all we experience is a sense of feeling blue. So God, please be near us today. Loving God, hear our prayers. We invite you to offer your own intercessions and thanksgivings that are deep within your hearts. Loving God, hear our prayer. And in your merciful love, we lift up all of this and more in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. His 
His promise is peace for those who believe. So come, though you have nothing, come. He is the offering, come. See what your God has done. Christ is born, Christ is born. Christ is born for you. Christ is born. Christ is born. Christ is born for you. Christ is born for you. If you didn't grab those elements, now would be a good time to get them and bring them as we prepare for the great Thanksgiving. This is not Wakehill's table. This is not the Methodist table. This is Christ's table, and it's offered to all who believe in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Let us continue. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right to give you thanks and praise, great God of the coming dawn. For in each new day you surprise the earth with splendor. Your spirit moves across the face of the waters and brings forth life. At the dawn of all things in a garden, you worked the earth. Elbow deep in mud, you fashioned us, gifted us, gave us work to do. Made from the earth, made by your hand, we who forgot who we were, we forgot who you were, and we tried to remake ourselves. We rejected your love and fell into sin and death. Yet even in our darkness, you continued to speak light and life. As your people, we sometimes sought you and often strayed. But you were faithful to your promise and to us, and called yourself by your name. The God of Israel did not abandon the people Israel, and you spoke of a day to come when you would come once more to save. From the darkness of a stable... You brought forth the light of the world. He carried your light into every darkened corner, calling those kept in darkness to rejoice in your love and exposing those who hid from the truth to the light of your righteous judgment. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. And so we live on the edge of this land, look across the waters to the horizon. We come to live on the edge of your new and promised day. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord. God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took bread, he gave thanks to you, God, and he broke the bread, and then he gave it to his disciples, and he said, take eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the midst of our pains and our joys, Christ our Savior dwells among us and reminds us there is always hope. And then when the supper was over, he took the cup. He again gave thanks to you, God. And then he gave the cup to his disciples and he said, take, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of a new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. And as we do this, remember always that Christ our Savior is right next to you saying, I love you. I will never leave you. Let us pray. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit on all who are gathered and who are present watching and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit make us one with Christ in his sufferings, one with each other in mutual love, and one in ministry to all the world with healing grace until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us lift our voices together in prayer. Our Father, who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy, thy will, will be done. done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. In the midst of our longest night, Christ, our Savior, dwells among us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia and amen. Amen. Each of us comes bearing our own hurts, sorrows, broken places, but we do not have to be alone. During this time of communion, you have the opportunity to offer your personal wounds to the God who loves each of us deeply and wants to carry your pain. God waits patiently, gently calling out, Give me your pain. Come to me, all who la labor and are heavy laden. I will refresh you. Now take time to offer communion to each other. Break off a piece of bread and give it to who is there, saying, This is the body of Christ given for you. Then you take the cup and present it with these words. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. If you have small children, remind them, Jesus loves you so much and thinks you are awesome. If you're watching this by yourself, maybe you're feeling a little alone, wondering how will you do communion by yourself. Please know, you are not alone. Through God and as part of God's kingdom here on earth, Pastor Don and I are with you in this sacred holy moment. All of your friends and family, whether from here at Lake Hills UMC, from around the world, they are with you in this moment. But most importantly, God is with you in this communion moment and with you in every second of every day of your life. You are not alone. So take a piece of bread and say these words. The body of Christ given for me. Take a drink of your juice and say, The blood of Christ Shed for me. His promise is peace 
For those who believe He's the Lamb who was given Slain for pardon His promise is peace For those who believe So come Though you have nothing Come He is the offering Come See what your God has done Christ is born Christ is born Christ is born For you Christ is born Christ is born Christ is born for you. Christ is born for you. Oh, we thank you, God, that in your great love you have fed us. You have fed us this meal of grace and of hope, and you have given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. Thank you, Lord, for breaking into our world and pouring into our lives and our experiences, always being a source of comfort and peace. We pray all this in the name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. As we gather this evening, we embrace and claim the darkness that is present, both in the world and in our lives. As people who are familiar with the darkness... We also know that we gather to be illumined by the light of Christ's child this Christmas season. These lights, in their brightness, are only symbols. But as they burn and finally go out, we remember that suffering passes, though the love of Jesus remains forever. We invite each of you to light a candle, and as you do so, remember that it is God who lights a candle in your darkness and holds you close until you are able to shine. Jesus, Lord. 
Let us now go from this place proclaiming that we have seen the glory of God, believing that there is a light that shines in the darkness and which the darkness shall not overcome. And may the love of the Creator, the joy of the Spirit, and the peace of the Christ child be with you this Advent season, this Christmas, and evermore. Amen.